So thank you. <laughs> thank you again to our gold sponsor. I, this is my fourth session of uh, moderating today. And um, it has been an absolute, absolute pleasure. Um, our gold sponsor was Watchful and we had so many great um, secondary sponsors as well. Um, you know how to ask questions. At, at this point in the day, I think we're all uh, very informal. So if you, you wanna say something, say it. Jump on stage, do whatever you'd like. Um, Patrick just woke up, so I'm not even sure he'll notice. Um, so Patrick Jackson comes from Down Under, as you all know. Um, back in the early days of CMS's emerging, he checked out as many as he could find, and he found one named uh, Mambo as the easiest one to wrap his head around. Shortly afterwards, the project fought, uh, forked and a thing called Joomla emerged. Since then, he has made it his niche, building his web design business up from a handful of static HTML sites to now being involved in building, hosting, or consulting on over 200 Joomla sites since um, 27, well, 2007. Help, having helped um, found the Melberg Joomla user group in 2008, he has been actively part of the Joomla Australian community, contributing to jugs and attending many Joomla Day Australia events over the years. Patrick is here today to tell us more about volunteering for the Joomla community. I will let you get started. And I don't know um, if this is more of an active discussion, but you can probably get people to jump on the stage if they have questions, it's up to you. Yeah, we'll do that possibly a bit okay. later on. Um... All right, let's hear it. Got a few things to, to run through. So, and, and I'll cough a bit offline. Um, morning, oh, sorry, not morning, afternoon, everybody. So it's uh, four o'clock there. It's it's uh, just gone uh, 6 18 a.m. in Melbourne, Australia. Um, uh, I thought I was the earliest start, but uh, Mick, who's also in the room, uh, is. Um, beat me by an hour he's just finished his presentation on Joomla stack exchange uh now looking at uh, who's in the room many of you i've dealt with a lot in the past year and uh, Nadja, i think it's i've crossed paths once before with you um but the rest uh, that are in the audience uh live um are uh, previous uh conversion so i'm expecting that uh, i'm up against two joomla uh personalities that are a little bit bigger than me. Uh, and I imagine uh, a lot of people are watching um, Brian Tiemann's presentation and a number of others will be watching Robbie Adair's presentation on Fabric. So um, so hopefully lots of people that are at the conference come back to watch this session after the event uh, and then follow on to, to get in touch to get involved in Joomla. So I'm just going to switch over to my presentation. Uh, so recenter myself on the screen. Um, so today I'm talking about the fact that uh, it's the Joomlas that make Joomla. So that's uh, related to the fact that Joomla is a volunteer organisation, um, and uh, you'll find out all the ways this morning that you can get involved. Uh, so as introduced, my name is Patrick Jackson, and that's me. Uh, currently, I'm the team leader for the Joomla volunteer engagement team. Uh, which is a role I've had since February uh, this year. Uh, in my day job, I run a small consultancy in Melbourne called KPS, uh, which stands for Kinetic Presentation Systems. And uh, that's the, the company um, I've effectively worked for myself for the last 21 years uh, since graduating uni and uh, do all sorts of event technical support services, uh, as well as the, the mainstay being Joomla hosting and Joomla support at the moment. So I'm a certified Joomla administrator. Uh, and uh, the, the pitch that I do is that I'm the Joomla consultants consultant. So uh, a lot of the time I'll be behind the scenes with Australian Joomla consultants, um, supporting them, uh, co-branding or whitelisting my services under theirs. Uh, so I'm a Joomla contributor. Uh, and in past year, I've gone a little bit overboard, as you'll find out in the next few minutes. Uh, so I'm a patch tester, a documentation writer, a translator, 
which is quite amusing actually, uh, a community member, a uh, magazine author, and many, many more aspects to what I've been doing. So I've also been doing a lot of things in Joomla. Uh, as Robin mentioned, I'm, I started the Joomla Melbourne user group in 2008. Uh, I've been on the, the team for Joomla Australia uh, for the last couple of years. Um, been sort of the, the Melbourne rep for, for organising our conferences. Um, and going forward, we're, we're just about to form a, a more formal structure, uh, which I'm part of there. I've spoken at many events and, and regularly at Joomla user groups over the last few years. Uh, and currently manage 70 Joomla websites that are live and have worked on hundreds more between my own clients and helping with Joomla user group members and their clients and their sites. And uh, those that know me outside of Joomla will f would find that I tend to talk about Joomla any time that I can. Um, I'm a bit of a uh, advocate for it. Um, I also manage a number of other websites that are not built in Joomla um, and depending on the systems that they've been created in, uh, quite often that creates a level of frustration uh, when it's um, in a system that's not quite as good as Joomla is. Uh, sometimes it feels like 95% of my work is done supporting the the 20% of sites that are outside the Joomla framework. So um, some days are more frustrating than others, uh, but other days I get to work with Joomla full time and uh, have a lot of fun um, making things quite streamlined. So one thing I just wanted to kick off with um, those that are in the room can jump over to the event tab on the side of helping. And if you haven't done so already, just head to the polls and answer the uh, the poll that has been up there for three months, if you haven't already, uh, the how long in Joomla terms have you worked with Joomla. Um, the surprising stat is that 80% of people have been using Joomla since Since Joomla began, so 27.1% uh, have been using Joomla since uh, it was Mambo, and then 53.1% have been using it since um, Joomla 1 and 1 1.5, uh, which shows that 80% of the conference participants that have responded to that poll um, have been using Joomla since it was Joomla, or sorry, since since the first version, which shows that we've got very high retention of users, which is fantastic, um, but at times makes it uh, quite interesting to see what um, what the reasons are that we're not attracting new users and things like that. But that's for a, a different type of conference, a different type of discussion, um, and we'll see what we can do to uh, increase the number of volunteers at the moment to, to get more of that uh penetration into the market so so i voted for, for well, sorry my poll response was that mambo was my grouping um i did a deep dive around 2004 into what content management systems were available at the time <coughs> um i at the time had been using an asp based one that was was not quite firing correctly um and had its issues with various ASP hosting versus Linux uh, based hosting. So um, when I found Mambo, uh, I also found WordPress in its first version. Uh, I think I glanced at what might have been an early version of Drupal. Um, PHP Nuke, I think was another one. There was a, a cluster of, of very similar ones that were all about the same age in 2004, um, the heady early days of CMS. And um, one came out on top. I found Mambo and it was probably the, the model that made more sense to me in that articles and were in, stored in categories. And then you pointed to various content in menu items. 
and that's still the basis of Joomla. So over the years, uh, I followed the fork, and that's 15 years now that uh, I've been using Joomla. So it's been an interesting year in Joomla. Um, Joomla 4 is getting close. Uh, it's been an interesting year globally. COVID-19 has, has knocked various places around. Uh, and in Victoria, where I am, we had one of the longest and largest and most severe lockdowns as part of uh, 2020. Um, and so I very quickly found myself at this time last year being um, effectively stuck at home for uh, the better part of six months while Australia was in the process of um, containing and eradicating COVID locally. Um which were reaping the benefits of uh, more this time this year uh, than some other countries are. Um, but uh, Joomla has certainly benefited from that. So, <clears throat> so in April last year, we started a program called Bugs and Fun at Home. Um, so Philip Walton, who uh, um, came up with the concept, reached out uh, probably just over 12 months ago and was after someone who could maintain the uh, first six to eight hours of a global 24-hour Bugs and Fun channel. Um, so wanted it to start at UTC midnight and then, then follow through. Uh, and for the better part of six months, we ended up having um, myself and Philip uh, jump on at various times of the day. Um, Philip would start the room uh, around 9, 10 o'clock UTC, which would be um, what time is that for me? about 6 a.m., I think, uh, Australian time. So I'd get up and, and turn that on. And then we'd have the room run globally. He'd come back on uh, later in the day. Um, so no, I've got the times wrong. It was mid-morning in Australian time. So we'd start this 24-hour challenge in the middle of the morning and then he'd pick it up in the Australian evening, which would be the, the UK morning. And then people around the world could have a, a chat forum that they could jump into and, and get involved and jump on uh, Google Meet. Um, that part of it didn't really sort of take off in, in people jumping on and off the Meet too often. Um, so we, we persisted with it, but we've ended up now that in Joomla's Ring Central, um, we've got a Bugs and Fun at Home channel that's thriving with 120 people that are still regularly involved now, 12 months on, um, in, in managing code and managing all the other activities that are going on. Um, that's become quite a, a nice conversational community in there. Um, so that then grew into getting involved in the Pizza, Bugs and Fun, which turned into a virtual event last year, um, which changed the, the demographic. So there wasn't uh, many groups that could meet in person last year, like in previous years. Um, and in fact, uh, I think one of the only groups that met in person where there wasn't isolation um, was in Brisbane, Australia, where Mick and uh two other members in queensland were able to to meet and and do their thing there so um i got involved with that and found out sort of how things run and um last week uh, i've taken over the reins of that as well so i'll be the pizza bugs and fun coordinator for 2021 um so stay tuned in various channels uh as we get through the year and and this year we're probably going to change the format slightly It'll be uh, still have a very large virtual mix to it, but it'll also have um, uh, in person where we can, and possibly other pizza bugs and fun events during the course of the year um, to specialise on on specific projects like documentation and translation, which need to be done for for Joomla four. So, so the main focus of Bugs and Fun at Home has been patch testing. And in doing all the patch testing for Joomla 4, it's rapidly getting closer. Um, 
Beta 1 came out during J and Beyond conference in May last year. Uh, we're now fast approaching Beta 8, uh, and we're going to get to a point where um, a release candidate shouldn't be far off. Um, so there's a, a feature freeze at the moment, but there's still plenty of things to be tested. During the course of the year, I've ascended the ranks inadvertently um, through volunteering my time through Bugs of Fun at Home, and I've ended up 25th on the chart. So for the last 12 months, I'm the 25th most active member of, of the Joomla um, issue tracker. Um, and in that time, I've scored 226 tracker points, 430 test points, 45 code points, and ranked 25 overall. Now, that sounds interesting. Um, but to get to 25th is not been that hard to do um, in the scheme of things. Through some regular activity, I've managed to you know, get lots of tests done in six months of bugs and fun at home. So every Saturday doing sort of two or three tests. Uh, helping out at PBF meant that there was sort of a surge in October last year. Um, and now what I've been doing recently is burst of activities between work projects. So uh, I'll fluctuate week to week as to, to how high up. I think I'm sitting about sixth in the last week, um, knowing that it was the anniversary and knowing that this presentation was coming up. I um, did a few extra tests just to creep onto the bottom of the, the leaderboard there. The most of the rest of the list above me on that, that chart of 25 uh, are core programmers for, for Joomla. So um, they're, they've taken it past being an occasional contribution um, to being sort of a fairly regular uh, couple of hours every week um, spent testing or coding or, or putting more, more points in there. Um, and you'll see on the chart that some people have got very high tracker points um, and they might have more code points and less test points. Um, so my color coding there shows that I've contributed less in the way of code. Um, so I've only had about, I think, a half a dozen pull requests created over the time. Um, I've done a significant amount of testing um, but the blue indicates the tracker points where I don't tend to talk too much about the code. Um, so you'll see that a lot of people above me have got a high number of tracker points. And that means that they're, um, they're the ones that are discussing the code uh, in the issue tracker and making sure that you know, what's being submitted is what should be being submitted. So there's a lot of things to do with uh, having all of that um, quality added into the code uh, along the way so so then another area that i've been contributing in is jdocs which is the joomla documentation and on that leaderboard in the past 12 months i've i've hit the 21st place um uh so just looking here four pages and changes uh so i've scored 93 i've modified 66 pages and made 251 changes. Um, now, documentation is one area that everybody can get more involved without too much of a, uh, a strain on um, needing a lot of technical knowledge. Uh, you just need to be able to write to a degree. Um, so I've been tweaking docs as I find issues uh, maintaining docs where I found things aren't pointing to the right place. There's a significant list of things that need to be maintained on the, the documentation side at the moment. Um, you could uh, easily outrank me um, by just concentrating on the one area there to get um, a whole section of the maintenance done for a particular type of problem. Um, but it does have a little bit of... Um, finessing needed to know which things need to be uh, maintained properly and how to maintain it. But uh, if you get involved in German documentation, you'll be able to find out more of that. 
uh, a number of my updates, admittedly uh, updating the Bugs and Fun at Home page for a few weeks. Um, but we've um, pretty much uh, got that one down packed at the moment. There's probably a few updates following this event that we'll make um, going forward. Uh, there is lots to be done. So um, I think some of the maintenance lists have got 500 dot points on them for the things that are of, of particular note. Um, they're subtle in some cases, but there's, there's certainly plenty to be done. The other thing to note is that the tracker on the documentation list is also the tracker for changes made to um, translated versions of, of uh, Joomla documentation. So you'll find that some of the people further up the list are quite often um, being uh, easily accumulating lots of hits because they're marking code for uh, marking documentation for translation um or translating it to their local language themselves and so you can easily get lots and lots of changes made by one person along the way so we join the documentations in media wiki uh, at the moment and that takes a bit of time to learn the syntax and, uh, and know what's going on so um it doesn't take too long but it but it's certainly it's very different to editing a joomla article um in that you, you've got to know the other syntax that's required uh, and a few little things are a little bit fiddly along the way. But uh, if you're interested in contributing to documentation, um, reach out and um, happy to run a, an information session on how to go about doing that. The other tip is to start small. So you know, one of the maintenance items is simply to update images on various tutorials um, to the latest version of Joomla. Uh, so there's a lot of tutorials that were written for 2.5 and then where the text was updated for Joomla 3, but the imagery never got updated for Joomla 3. So you might be doing something that's the same in 2.5 and 3 effectively, um, but when you're looking at the pictures, they're in Joomla 3, not in, in Joomla 2.5 now. This is probably one of the more amusing leaderboards that I'm on. Uh, Crowdin is the platform that Joomla uses for their translations now. And you can jump up straight onto Crowdin and start translating to your local language. Currently, I rank 10th overall for activity in the last 12 months. Um, the particularly amusing part there is you know, I've translated 24,427 words. Uh, target words um, probably means I've adjusted something somewhere along the way. Uh, and I've had five updates. Um, sure, that's my, my translation is not really a translation. Um, I've been managing the English US translations. Um, so what that means is that uh, the English US translation pack is effectively identical to the English GB one. Um, so it's very fast for me to, to copy and uh, save all of the strings. Um, but the, the tricky part is when I spot something that uh, is a, a slight spelling difference. So the common ones are um, in English GB, words like colour are spelled O-U-R. In English, in the US, we drop the U. Um, and the other tricky one is is the number of times that the English will have S in a word and the US version has a Z in the word, uh, such as surprising, which would be um, uh, Z for all of the audience that are in the US um, and S for the rest of the the English speaking world. So um, it still needed to be done. So uh, I've jumped on partially more to find out more about how um, uh, crowd in works and how the translations work. Um, and that zero that you can see at the top of the screen is probably the one thing that, that makes it um, uh, 
a reason to go and do it, which I'll explain in a second. Um, so in the process, we're looking to add English Australia and, and English New Zealand as language packs. And probably the only difference at the end of the day with that for English GB um, will be the greetings. So uh, we'll probably change it to G'day and Kia is the New Zealand uh, common greeting. Um, and so uh, having those language packs, uh, th those language packs exist in Joomla 3, but they're sort of placeholders. So you can download those packs or the English AU on at least, um, and it will not have all the translations in place, but what it will actually do is transfer um, the language indicators in Joomla to say that the location information is Australia versus the UK. Um, I'm still to work out sort of where the benefits of that are for SEO purposes, um, but um, uh, that might be a, a topic that uh, Tim Davis might want to uh, weigh in on in the Q and A session at the end here. Um, at the moment, we can't get those packs added uh, because of a, a couple of changes going on with things moving to, to crowd in. Um, but once that happens, then I'll follow up on that process to get those languages put in. The zero that's up the top there is the number of words that I've translated that have actually been approved. So reading through how crowding works, even though English US is now at 100% translated, it's only sitting about 27% approved. And what that means is that when a language pack gets exported from crowd in and made available for Joomla, um, only the approved strings are going to appear in that uh, translation pack. So at the moment, there's a push to, to rebuild the Joomla translation team, um, which is in the works. And once that happens and we get more approvers and moderators of that um, back in place, which is a, an ideal spot if you are multilingual to, to become a contributor, um, then uh, all of the languages should stay translated and approved at the same rate. Um, and that means that there'll be full language packs throughout Joomla. Crowdian, I found, is amazingly easily to create translations with. Um, effectively, you, you go and pick your language and say translate all, and then it just presents one string at a time to you, um, which you can then translate and then save, and it'll then load the next one and gives you an indicated downside as to how many need to be loaded still, uh, or sorry, translated still. Um, and uh, once you start following a language, when new strings come in, you'll get an announcement email saying you, there might be three new strings for the Joomla project, and you can just click on that and go straight into um, translating those new strings, which makes it much easier to um, keep on top of a language once you've started. So, um, so there's 88 languages in the system at the moment, and that means that uh, there's plenty of work to be done um, and you can see easily on the, the crowding page how many, um, uh, oh, sorry, what percentage every language is at. Uh, I'm looking at the room at the moment and, and live at the second. Uh, I'm not sure whether many, uh, many in the live presentation are, are multilingual, um, but we need to, uh, to work on that uh, down the track as to, to getting more people in um, some of the more obs not obscure but lesser used languages um, involved to get those finished off because uh, language multi-language is one of Joomla's main selling points. Uh, there'll be more Joomla translation program information coming out in coming months as that um, gets put in place and so that's a new team that's a merge of the core translation team and the community translation team um, to try and facilitate all that in one go. So another area of, uh, and probably the main reason that I've, I've reinvigorated my global Joomla activities was the relaunch of the Joomla magazine at the start of last year. Um, so I'm now a staff author. Um, so you, if you have been following the magazine, um, you'll see that I'm a, a regular contributor each month. 
so in the past 14 months i've written 17 articles and had them published um the busiest month i think i submitted four in one go um that's with tide lines for regular submissions that's not necessarily recommended uh, and um at the moment we're on a push to find more uh, authors for the magazine so if you've got something you want to write up about um just let us know so i've been concentrating on joomla 4 features niche um which means that most of the articles i've been writing are uh regarding joomla 4 and the new features and we've also got um a number of other common storylines going on in the magazine so you can find all of that the frustration i keep on finding with with joomla 4 is or oh, well, not with the joomla 4 niche um as i write the articles quite often it's the first time joomla has presented uh that feature in a, a promotional format um and so what we keep on finding is that the documentation might not have caught up and so in trying to direct people to to find more information about the feature um i'm quite often starting to write the documentation at the same time that i'm writing the article um so that's part of also the reason for this presentation is to try and push uh, more people into documentation and then into writing joomla articles um, for the magazine because then we've got a, a feed of people coming in uh, to um, uh, lighten the load for some people um, but also just magnify the amount of information that's available now, so anyone can contribute to the magazine all you need to do is go to magazine.joomla.org slash FAQ and you can find out how to become an author. Um, so articles ideally are somewhere between 1,000 and 1,500 words, um, which if you're uh, uh, a subject matter expert, shouldn't take long to write up that information. Um, but if you're also writing something that's, that's got a lot of technical detail, um, from experience, it can can actually take a few hours to, to get that 1,500 words out um, and include graphics and, and screen grabs and all the rest of it along the way. So um, if anyone does find some of my articles useful, please, um, or any articles on the magazine useful, uh, please feel free to use the comment section at the bottom of the article to, uh, to give the authors feedback um, and encourage them to, to contribute some more. So then you might hear occasionally the term, you know, I'm a member of Joomla um, come about. Uh, and at the moment, you know, this is my Joomla volunteer profile and, and I've got a, a few different types of memberships on the way. So, so when you get to the point of getting involved with Joomla at a global level, um, there's a number of different uh, tiers to the, the, way that the the structure of open source matters is um and what what a, a role or a position um indicates in the scheme of things so as a quick walk through there um when you first come on board as a, a member of a team you'll come in as a contributor and contributors don't have what are called voting rights but i'll come back to that later um and and contributors to a degree aren't uh full-time members of the team necessarily it's designed for them to be able to make a contribution and have that contribution recognized um, on the volunteer portal. Uh, so, and then they'll also be added into communications for that team. Step up from that is a member and a member of a team. The expectation is that you're uh, regularly participating in the team and uh, attending meetings and performing tasks for that team. Um, and the difference, the primary difference between contributor and member aside from sort of the expected level of involvement is that if you're a member, then you've got voting rights with open source matters for Joomla positions. Um, so you're eligible to vote for the team leader of your team. You're eligible to vote for the department coordinator for your department, and you're eligible to vote for 
executive positions of the president, the vice president, the secretary, and the treasurer. Um, so the last election, there was about 131 members of the organisation, um, and that's a number that, that goes up and down over time. Uh, I think um, before a, a, a bit of a clean-up in the last 18 months, um, there had been 160 voting members, um, and then that dropped down a bit, and now uh, hopefully with the efforts of the volunteer engagement team, presentations like this, um, and, and actually going to try and find more members, we'll end up with a, a larger um, uh, voting base soon, um, which will uh, hopefully keep the, the organisation uh, healthy. Um, every team then has a team leader and, and working groups have a team leader. Um, typically, you can only be a team leader of a single team in a department. Um, so where I'm team leader for two different groups, I'm a team leader of the volunteer engagement team, but I'm a team leader of a working group as well. And those two teams are actually in different departments, um, which is what enables that. So, so you won't see too many people spreading their um, leadership roles uh, very thinly. Um, <clears throat> the... Um, Team leaders typically also need to appoint uh, assistant team leaders. Uh, and at the moment, I'm, I'm trying to recruit for my two assistant team leaders, uh, having only recently taken on the roles. Uh, once you're a team leader, then you typically also become a department member. Um, so I'm a programs department member because of the volunteer engagement team. Um, I'm not a, I'm sorry, I'm not a department member of the events team because the working groups don't have the same status as a team um and then over time i'm <clears throat> um i've also joined the events team and <coughs> we're revamping the the jumbly user group team at the moment so i'll be uh, uh listed on on some other part relating to that shortly so um Voting rights and, and the bylaws of open source matters are, are sort of a, a once you're in the, the process of being a member, um, we're working on onboarding documents that, that tell new members all of the things that are required when they are a member. Um, so for the purposes of, of this video, spend a little bit of time uh, getting involved more in Joomla first um, with various things. It's not that becoming a team member is the last thing to consider um but based on time commitments which i'll go through in a couple of minutes uh being involved is is going to be one of the um more time intensive parts of of being a volunteer in joomla um on the joomla profile there's a whole heap of other features up the top about your profile so if you are going to create a joomla profile um my suggestion is to to make it so that you can actually be contacted and be communicated with. Um, the Joomla Certified Administrator Badge comes in automatically once you put in your cross-link to your certification. Um, and then you can see that I've added uh, a large array of information on all the different things that I'm involved in to, to promote how to get in touch with me. Um, admittedly, one of the things that a lot of people have pointed out is that I'm very, very contactable um and typically i'll be sitting on uh five different communication channels when i'm on my computer every day so um being in australia i'll my business day is the us evening so a lot of the time i'll have conversations with people throughout the us um during the evening in australia um or sorry during the evening in the us and then around mid-afternoon in Australia at the moment is when um, uh, India comes online and then Europe and Africa come online uh, early, or oh, sorry, late afternoon, early evening. Um, and so quite often I'll, I'll start the morning catching up on the overnight conversation and then finish my day talking about the, the next batch of things to hand off to other people to, to do. So... Um, so if you end up on Joomla's Ring Central, feel free to drop me a line or if um, 
you want to reach out on any of the channels that you're seeing there, um, let me know. So some tips for volunteering uh, to contribute based on the time that you have. Um, we're about to, to do a few things um, that are going to focus in on how long some activities take. Um, admittedly, lockdown gave me lots of time to get involved more and get lots of things done. Um, but uh, picking tasks that you have time for and picking tasks that suit your skills uh, are certainly ways to optimise how you get involved. So we're about to do a contribute to Joomla page revamp. And what that's going to do is uh, give you a way to filter tasks based on the time requirement and also the skills requirement. Um, so that'll range from things that you can do if you've got 30 minutes now and you only have 30 minutes occasionally to contribute, we'll have a handful of tasks that we can show you that you can do uh, that'll make a difference, but might only take 30 minutes. So. That might be a suggestion on doing some translations, writing or maintaining some documentation, uh, doing an occasional patch test, or uh, perhaps even just um, uh, weighing in on some um, graphics or something for uh, communicating about Joomla. And that'll go all the way through to roles that have a serious time commitment. So. Um, Probably the, the most time intensive roles uh, classes, the department coordinator roles, and uh, ideally the team leader roles are, are almost a serious uh, amount of time required. Um, the job description at the moment says that uh, department coordinators should expect to spend um, up to 20 hours a week uh, in the role. Um, which is a, a very large volunteer commitment. So thank you to anyone that, that contemplates or, or takes on those roles. Um, it also has a factor that is um, ideally you should be responding to emails within 24 hours of receiving them. So um, so the, the 20 hours gets quite easily spread across the course of a week. Um, and you really need to be on top of communications to, to do all of that. So um, we're going to have things that are a list on that list that are the 30 minutes whenever, um, one hour a month, a couple of hours a month, uh, one or two hours a week, and then all the way through to the, the full um, level of commitment there. Um, so that you should see some of the uh, changes to that coming in uh, by the middle of the year. The easiest way is to go about getting involved uh, uh, to look at, uh, at some of the materials we've got. Um, so Bugs and Fun at Home, I'll put that link up in a moment. Um, uh, we've found in a, we've, we've done a, a vet project called Help Wanted um, where we went and had a look at how people are getting involved in Joomla and what barriers to entry there are. And so that's that's fielding a number of the changes that we're making at the moment. Um, and the first one of the changes is that we've now got a, an email address, which is contact-vet at, contact, uh, at community.joomla.org. Um, and so that's a, a catch-all email address that we can direct people to. Um, which means that they can um, shoot us an email and tell them about uh, themselves, their skills, and what they're looking at getting involved with in Joomla. Um, and that, that comes to the volunteer engagement team. And we can then disseminate that and make introductions between the person making the inquiry and the team leaders for, for the teams that they want to get involved with. Um, and we'll also be building a skills database over time that will let us contact people to say what's going on. Um, one of the things that we keep on finding with that is that uh, uh, anecdotally, there's been a lot of times where people have, have sent messages through to teams and because of the structure of the, the mechanism, the way it's been, um, they might not necessarily have gotten a, a contact back from that uh, organisation so, um, or part of the organisation. 
So tell us the skills that you have and we'll find you a job. And tell us the skills that you want to work on. And one of the things with Joomla is that you can learn skills along the way. So uh, probably the biggest takeaway that I've had in the past 12 months is that um, I now know more than I ever did about GitHub and how patch testing works. Uh, and my PHP and Joomla programming game has gone through the roof. So there's a lot of things that have really improved over time. So, um, so what I'm going to finish with is a quick rapid fire of things that you can do to contribute to, to Joomla. Um, if you've been and visited the expo booth during the event, uh, I put together a video that, that runs for about 10 minutes that, that shows you sort of all of these as quick examples um, and explains how to get involved. Um, and uh, that video will end up on the Joomla main channel. It's currently on the Joomla Australia YouTube channel if you want to go and look at that. So you can contribute code, you can test code patches, write documentation, translate Joomla into your language, translate Joomla extensions. So there's two parts to crowd in at the moment. One's the core and one's all of the other things to do with Joomla. Um, and, and most extension providers are now using crowd in for translations. You can translate Joomla community material. So all of the Joomla promotional information is set up with multilingual um, structures. And so that's all loaded into the Joomla community materials um, on Crowdin. So you can translate all of the things to promote Joomla. And that, that's a particularly useful way to get the word out. <laughs> and then you can translate documentation into your local language. Um, and the translation of the documentation is done directly in JDocs. Uh, you can reach out to find out more there. Uh, we suggest that people get involved in the forums and Joomla Stack Exchange. So if you have a question, the, those two avenues are among the best to, to try and get an answer if you can't find it on any of the Joomla websites. Um, the bigger help is to volunteer by answering questions on Joomla forums and Joomla Stack Exchange. So if you keep an eye out for, for answers or for questions that you think you can answer, then that's a great way to get involved there. Uh, locally, you can join a local user group or attend an organized Joomla event. So you know, 201 people registered for uh, this event, um, which shows that there's a thriving community still out there. Uh, I know that there's you know, only a handful of Australians, uh, because of the time that the conference is on, uh, ended up registering. Um, but, uh, but there's certainly yeah, many, many there's thousands of users out there that, that just need to, to find out more about Joomla. So, um, and then share your knowledge by writing magazine articles, as I mentioned earlier. So if you want to get more involved, uh, then join a team to work on something bigger. Um, so there's about 50 teams at the moment, I think, that do all sorts of things uh, in, in a whole lot of departments. You can find out all about those teams at volunteers.joomla.org, where you'll be able to navigate through the team structure. Uh, another option is to, you know, if you can't contribute time, then Joomla's after uh, financial support, and you can come in as a sponsor of the Joomla project. Uh, and in the other video, you'll find out more there. Uh, I'll bring up the, the URL during the Q&A time for where to go there. And the easiest thing you do is go and tell people about Joomla. So Joomla really needs to, to keep the word out there um, and we can find out, um, you know, if you become an evangelist, an advocate for Joomla, then you know, uh, it might turn a few more users our way um, and, and get them using what really is one of the better um, content management systems in the world. <laughs> So if you'd like to volunteer or find out more or just have a discussion on volunteering more, shoot an email to contact-vet at community.joomla.org and we'll get in touch. Um, or you can find out more about contributing to Joomla on the joomla.org site and the contribute to joomla.html page. If you want to discuss more things with me, um, that's my... Um, uh, link tree card 
So uh, kps.fyi is my URL shortener, um, and slash PJ will, will take you to my LinkedIn page. And from there, you can get directly in touch with me through about, uh, I think, about 20 different channels, um, follow my socials and all the rest of it, uh, and go from there. So, um, so we've got about uh, 10 minutes left for questions. So if anybody does have anything, uh, feel free to step up to the stage and uh, I'll start with the big guns. Welcome, Brian. No, the big guns just gave this presentation. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Patrick. Uh, I, I really appreciate uh, what a tight fit that is for the overall spirit of the event. Uh, your comments are well received. Uh, how much sleep have you had this weekend? Uh, about eight hours of, of regular time over the two days. But, well, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just, I'm always a huge fan when people lead by example, uh, and you certainly do that within the project at large. Uh, and for sure this weekend, I uh, greatly appreciate how well you've represented the project at the Joomla booth uh, this weekend. I know you've been filling in some big chunks of time there and uh, doing a lot of work behind the scenes. So uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Way to go, man. That's what I do. So. Are there any other so questions? Well, what, I'm sorry? No, no, you go. No, I was just going to ask if anyone had any questions, feel free yeah. to uh, post them in chat. Tim Davis is weighing in. Thank you for everything. Um, I know that's well received. He spent some time in the Joomla booth this weekend. Um, yeah, and you've got a video you're sharing? Yeah, so that's the video that I mentioned earlier uh, as to um, uh, the one that we had playing in the booth. That's uh, introduction to Joomla and um, uh, how to contribute. So um, most of the... Most of the things that I mentioned are also in there um, and also have more information. So the actual URLs that I haven't mentioned in this presentation, um, you can watch that video and find out more about um, Bugs and Fun at Home and um, where all the volunteering bits and pieces go on and go from there. So, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Lots of good information and lots of ways to connect. Robin uh, and I actually had talked about that earlier this weekend yes. in uh, acknowledging our own journeys to volunteering and how challenging it was at the time. Yeah. And um, so it's it's good to know that uh, we've improved some of those processes. We've identified areas that it still need improvement and that there's folks like yourself, Patrick, that are waiting to help catch uh, when folks are ready to make a leap. So yeah, yeah, that's right. So, so I've already been contacted by Christiane of, on Ring Social. Accessibility. <laughs> yeah, on accessibility. Yeah, uh, um, and I think on Ring Central. So yep. um, yeah, if, if any of you, I don't. I think we're probably preaching to the choir here, but um, Laura um, was kind of an advocate for anyone who's running these jugs to get them on Ring, ring Social. Uh, Ring Central and yeah. more involved with what's going on. Yeah. And that's how I got involved originally. Yeah. Um, and, and it's uh, one of the things we've found in the, the events department stuff is that we've been changing the, um, the focus there uh, up until the last 12 months or probably the last eight months even. Um, the focus of the events team and the Joomla user group team had been an administrative unit. So um, effectively you'd submit your event and they'd send back your approval for the event and say, you know, here's what you need to do to fix trademark issues or you know, your, your listing's been approved. And, and that's been effectively sort of the, the bubble that it all fits into um, and as far as they went. So um, amusingly, the main group of people in the, um, the volunteer engagement team, um, most of us in that team at the moment are also heavily user group focused. Um, so I think of the 12 main people in the vet, 10 of us are user group coordinators and eight of us are, are in the, the most active user groups around the world. Um, that have all done virtual jugs and things like that. So, so the overlap there means that the user group team and the vet team are basically almost one and the same. Or, or it tells yeah. you that you should be reaching out to all of those jug um, yeah, yeah. leaders uh, and, and getting so, and getting them a direct yeah. line to yeah. being able to be a volunteer. 
Yeah, and so um, what came out of the, the meeting earlier in April is that um, the admin list has been exported and shared with that group. And um, following Joomla Day USA, um, that team in the next week are, are actually trying to reach out to all the people that are registered as user group coordinators to find out what's going on there um, and then uh, report back. So SD's watching... Um, SD got elected as the events uh, team leader uh, in that uh, team. <laughs> uh, and so um, uh, SD's uh, cracking the whip on us all to, to get that done. So um, it's it, there's a lot of things that have rapidly come about through um, a, a mixture of, I think, somewhat frustration, but also it seems to be just a time in Joomla where... Uh, a new or a refreshed batch of people have sort of come together, um, whether it's COVID, whether it's timing, whether it's um, just a, a range of situations. And the push seems to be on to, to really get more invigoration back into um, finding out solutions to, to Joomla's internal uh, <laughs> seeming problems um, and get people involved more. So. Brian's probably got more of a yeah, opinion on <laughs> I, how we're going with that. <laughs> I, we've got we've got a great group, really passionate folks that are uh, incredibly creative, incredibly energetic. Again, I'm just in awe of the effort, yeah. not just from you, Patrick, but from the entire team that's put this event yeah. together. Um, it's been really good. We are we're coming up on quarter after the hour. Do we want to give folks a little 15 minute buffer to do some networking and hit expo booths? Otherwise, we can take some more questions. Um, I do see there was another couple contributions. Gary's weighing in. SD's thanking yep. you. I think we're good. Yeah, I don't see any other. No, it's right. just, probably just um, uh, wrap it up and then go see Brian in a little bit. It's been a definitely a long day. It's already in the can, so I'm I'm eager yeah. to see me too. From what Gary said, there was. Uh, yeah, J4 doesn't seem to have translations ready, um, which I would imagine you were asking at the point that I was going through the translation team stuff. Um, that is one of the concerns that I've got with uh, Joomla 4 at the moment is that the, the languages now are starting to creep into becoming a release blocker. Mm -hmm. um, so um, unfortunately with this audience, everybody's a solid English speaker. Um, and looking in the room there, we, um, yeah, everybody that's still floating around at the end of the session uh, are either in the US, the UK, or um, Australia. Um, so that, that certainly makes it a bit harder to, uh, to push the translation avenue there. Um, but if you do know contacts in Joomla who are multilingual, um, have them take a look at Crowd In and go from there. So, yeah. Um, all right, cool. I hope that's benefit. I hope to see lots of emails from people via contact that dash bet. Um, I'll say, hope that uh, you'll reach out and connect with me on uh, LinkedIn. Um, and, uh, you never know this, um, I'm actually in the process of starting a Joomla based podcast. Uh, and uh, I think I've already, I know I've spoken to Robin and Brian, uh, about being on that in the past. Um, but certainly everyone else that's that's watching, um, I'll uh, give you a tap on the shoulder when the time comes to to be in an episode. Sounds good. Great. Cool. We'll look forward to that. Patrick, thanks right. for a great session. And again, thanks for all your work this weekend. Uh, yeah. Just another half hour, man, and you're there. You've arrived. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to go back to bed, but I'll, I'll stick around and watch your pre-recorded. Um... <laughs> well, now that we <laughs> know just that you earlier, you could have been done. I watch it anytime. All right. Thanks, yeah. everyone, for sitting in on the session. Uh, hope you have an opportunity to learn more about getting involved, and we'll see you in the next session, 15 minutes out. All yeah. right. Take care. Great. Thanks, all. Bye.